Welcome back to our third and final video designed to help you begin to prescribe antibiotics. As you will be learning in future organ systems ID lectures, each anatomic site tends to be associated with a distinct group of bacteria based on each bacteria's ability to colonize at that site. This is called tropism and relates predominantly to surface binding sites of different bacteria and their nutrition needs and metabolism. Let's first look at the soft tissue infection cellulitis. This infection is primarily caused by three bacteria, group A strep or strep hyogenes, methicillin sensitive staph aureus, MSSA, and methicillin resistant staph aureus, MRSA, all of which can colonize the skin and subsequently invade when there is a skin damage or breakdown. Let's design an empiric regimen for this infection by picking the narrow spectrum antibiotics that cover these pathogens. As you can see in this antibiogram, oxacillin, cefazolin, ceftriaxone, and clindamycin all cover strep hyogenes and MSSA, but all fail to kill MRSA, which requires vancomycin, the bottom arrow. Because bacteria doubling time is approximately 60 minutes, clinicians cannot wait for the definitive identification of the organism causing infection and should begin an empiric or best guess regimen. The recommended empiric regimen for moderately severe cellulitis requiring hospitalization is IV cefazolin or IV ceftriaxin or IV clindamycin. Oxacillin and nafcillin are, is no longer recommended because of its expense and short half-life. If the infection does not improve, you should switch to vancomycin to cover for MRSA. Now let's design an empiric regimen for community-acquired pneumonia, abbreviated CAP, C-A-P. The most common bacterial pathogen is strep pneumoniae, followed by mycoplasma pneumoniae, staph aureus, or MSSA, haemophila influenza, and less commonly, legionella and chlamydia pneumoniae. The arrows point to the antibiotics that cover these pathogens and include ceftriaxone, levofloxacin, and azithromycin. Note that ceftriaxone does not cover Legionella, and when this antibiotic is used, it needs to be combined with azithromycin. Also, mycoplasma and chlamydia are very difficult to culture, and in order to ensure they are covered, patients with CAP are given azithromycin. For mild or walking pneumonia, azithromycin alone is recommended because it offers reasonable coverage for all the primary pathogens. For patients who require hospitalization, a combination of azithromycin and ceftriaxone is recommended. In hospitalized patients, levofloxacin also offers reasonable coverage for all of these pathogens and is an alternative treatment, but its broad spectrum increased the risk of selecting for multi-resistant bacteria. Two other empiric regimens that you may want to review in the future are bacterial meningitis and urinary tract infections because these empiric regimens are covered on the USMLE exams. For your tests in this class, these empiric regimens will not be included as part of the testing material. However, this exercise does illustrate how you can use the antibiogram to construct an empiric antibiotic regimen. Now let's look at the overall strategy used by infectious disease experts to prescribe antibiotics. Step one, decide whether the patient has a bacterial versus a viral infection. Clinical clues may be helpful. Patients with an elevated peripheral white count, elevated procalcitonin, and elevated CRP are more likely to have a bacterial infection. Also, purulent exudate in the sputum, predominance of neutrophils in the CSF, and significant pyuria, pyuria point to a bacterial infection. Step two, if bacterial infection is suspected, determine the likely anatomic site of the infection and apply the empiric regimens I just discussed. Step three, in choosing the antibiotic regimen, it is important to take into account the flora in your hospital and unit. The antibiogram I shared reflects the national averages and may differ in your community and hospital. Step four, Take into account recent treatment with antibiotics. 
If a patient has received an antibiotic within the last two to four weeks, assume the present infection is resistant to the antibiotic that was previously prescribed. Step five, take into account specific host factors. Age, immune static, status, hepatic and renal function, duration of hospitalization, and most important, the severity of illness. More severely ill patients warrant coverage with broader spectrum antibiotics. Step six, at three days, streamline your antibiotic regimen based on culture results and the clinical response. And finally, step seven, pick the narrow spectrum, most cost-effective, least toxic regimen. I recommend using this seven-point checklist that can be downloaded from the website. Be sure to obey the three-day rule. Continuing broad-spectrum antibiotics beyond three days drastically alters the host's normal flora, selecting for resistant pathogens, including C. difficile. After three days, streamline your antibiotics by choosing the narrow spectrum possible based on your bacterial cultures and sensitivities. Finally, a word about colonization. As described in the three-day rule, under the selection pressures of antibiotics, non-sterile sites in the body will grow resistant bacteria and will be, and these bacteria will become the new resident organisms in the host. Often these bacteria will not become invasive, but simply colonize. Antibiotics should be switched only if there is evidence for a new infection, fever, leukocytosis, new exudate, new symptoms. Don't change your antibiotic based on the culture alone. Let me summarize the content of this final video. First, we showed how the antibiogram can be used to design an empiric antibiotic regimen for cellulitis and community-acquired pneumonia. Next, we described the seven-step strategy for prescribing antibiotics, emphasizing the importance of obeying the three-day rule and of differentiating colonization from a new infection. By applying what you have learned today, you can help to prevent the development of antibiotic-resistant pathogens, save lives, and prevent the end of the antibiotic era. Thank you.